In this video, we're going to talk about the Maven POM or Project Object Model. So let's just open up a sample project and have a look at what's in the POM. So here's a sample project opened up. So all Maven projects have a project object model. And this describes the view of the project as Maven would like to see it. So by this we mean it includes configuration and properties and build customizations which customize the build for a given project. So let's just have a look at this project and see what properties we have in. This is a project which was created with the Maven Quick Start archetype as a default project, but it's a good place to get started. So first off we have model version. So this is the version of the POM that's used. In general this doesn't change between Maven versions though. And either way it's generated by the archetype anyway so you don't really have to worry about it. Then next we have three very important properties in Maven which are known as the GAV coordinates which collectively stand for group ID, artifact ID and version. So here we can see these three properties. The group ID is basically kind of a namespace for where this particular project will live, kind of synonymous with the idea of a Java package. So it's a way of being able to group and aggregate different projects together under the same location, which corresponds to the same section in a Maven repository. Next up we have the artifact ID. This is the name of the artifact that will be produced. By that we mean the end build artifact that's produced as the output of the Maven build. So this is the base name for the artifact. Next we have the version, which in this case is 1.0 snapshot. So these three properties taken together, the group ID, artifact ID and version, specify the location that this artifact will be located in when it's deployed to a Maven repository. This is either an external repository, such as one of the many public open source ones there are, like Maven Central for example, which is the main default repository for Maven artifacts, although you won't be allowed to publish here unless you have a proper open source project. Or it could be an internal repository, which is normally a repository which is part of a corporate infrastructure. So here we're talking about tools like Nexus or Artifactory, which house all the Maven artifacts across an organization and third party dependencies as well in most cases. Or the local Maven repo cache, which is actually on your system. We'll just quickly demonstrate how the group ID, artifact ID and version map to the location of the repository by going to the command line and building and installing the artifact into the local repo cache. So let's just do that now. So let's just quickly cap this pom.xml file. And so this project should be located in a group ID, which is com.zension.training.demo. This means that in the local Maven repo cache, which is located here, we'd expect to see a folder structure like this, com.zension.training.demo. And we don't have that. So because we don't have that, it means it's not installed on this system currently. So if we quickly install, this will compile the source code, make the jar file and then install it into the local repository. Then we should see that it's populated that particular directory. And you can see here at the bottom where it's installed two items. We see myapp one0 snapshotjar and we also see the POM file which is deployed as well. So this means now if we re-execute that command, we will see the artifact there. So the first part of the path after m2 repository is the group ID, that's com.sension.training.demo. Then under there we have a subdirectory which is named after the artifact ID, which is my app. And if we go into my app, there we see one zero snapshot. So under the artifact ID directory, we see the versions which are available. There's only one version here because it's the version we just installed. And then finally, inside that version folder, we have the actual artifact itself, which is my app one dot zero snapshot dot char. You'll notice as well it's also deployed in myapp one dot zero snapshot dot pom. So let's just quickly take a look at that. And you should recognize this because this is actually the pom.xml file which was in the root of the project. So whenever you do an install with Maven to install to the local Maven repository cache or you do a deploy to deploy to an external repository, it also pushes along the pom.xml file such that when this particular artifact is used as a dependency in other projects, Maven knows which other dependencies it needs to download as well and a few other aspects too. So we see that the group ID, artifact ID and version, this so-called GAV coordinate, is used both in the publishing or installing of an artifact into a Maven repository to define its location there and the GAV coordinate can also be used to use an artifact as a dependency in the dependencies section of the pom.xml file too. So let's just go back to the pom.xml file and continue reviewing this. So whenever you create a Maven project, at the very least you have a pom.xml file which is at the root of the project, and this needs to include at least the first five properties, which is the model version, group ID, artifact ID, and version, and the packaging type. And this constitutes the so-called minimal POM. In other words, it's the absolute bare minimum that you need in Maven to be able to describe a project. But you can add other sections as well, as we can see by looking at this page on the Maven website. 
So this page on the Maven website gives you an overview of the Maven POM structure for the project object model. If we scroll down, there's a section there about what is the POM, but just underneath there, we have a description of what else is in here. So we can see in the first section we have the basics, which are the group ID, artifact ID version we saw before, the GAV coordinates, along with the packaging type, which can be JAR or WAR. This determines what actual type of build artifact you want to generate. So a WAR packaging type to generate a WAR file, which can be deployed into a web container, a JAR packaging type to create a JAR file, which can be used as a dependency then in other projects, or maybe as a standalone executable JAR file, for example. And there's some other bits and pieces there as well related to more advanced use cases of Maven relating to when you create multi-module builds and how you manage dependencies within there. We also see the dependencies section. This is where you specify the dependencies that the build should use. And then underneath there, you have the build settings. So the one we're concerned about in this course is the build tag. And it's inside the build tag that you actually define customizations of the current build. So let's just dig into that a little bit further. So the build section within the POM file can house a few different elements, but in this course we're concerned with the plugins section. And this is where you define plugins you're going to use within the build or provide configuration and customize existing plugins which are being used in the default build. We'll see more about that later on when we look at build life cycles. But feel free to have a look at this particular section which describes the POM to dig in for a few more details. But what we've covered here should give us enough of an idea of what the POM does and what it is in this introductory course.